Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on FTV. <coughs> the main talking points on tonight's programme. John Collins has announced he'll leave Celtic at the end of the season with Ronnie Dyler. This is on the back of Celtic clinching the title yesterday with a win over Aberdeen. Uh, Peter Houston says he's going to have a go at Hibernian in the playoffs and Ray McKinnon looks all set to become the Dundee United manager. Just a few of the talking points. <coughs> Alan Roth is alongside me, Peter Martin, and our bootroom guest, I'm delighted to say, is Rangers striker Kenny Miller. Kenny, welcome to the show. Lots to talk about, including, of course, uh, the big cup final ahead. Um, but first of all, Ruffy, John Collins, not unexpected that he would leave because a new manager mm -hmm. will obviously want to bring in his own team. Yeah, I, I thought there was a, a, a time just before the end of the season, I, I thought uh, Ronnie Delia was going to move on and I thought John was going to be given a chance maybe for the last six weeks or something just to put his own mark on the Celtic team. Uh, and who knows, we've seen it before, if a, somebody's given the chance and they, they start winning games and obviously the cup game was there as well, there might have been a chance, but uh, he's obviously made his mind up that uh, he's got to move on. Uh, and there was just a hint at today's press conference that maybe there are big changes afoot at Celtic, as you would expect, because obviously Kenny's side uh, are coming back into the Premiership. Yeah, I think the whole of Scottish football is just sitting waiting to see what Celtic do, to see what Rangers do, to see what Hearts do, Aberdeen do. I mean, that's a talking point. Uh, Derek McInnes in the papers this morning saying, give me some money and I'll make it a better challenge. And I'm sure Rangers will be doing the, the same. So it'll be a really exciting close season for the fans. Yeah, but suddenly, Kenny, the expectation level <coughs> at every club has rocketed because there is a, a, an eager anticipation of what you guys uh, will do at Ibrox. Well, that's it. We're, uh, obviously, we're to take care of the job at hand this year, which is make sure we got promoted. We've done that. We've done it well. It's uh, been a really enjoyable season, but we're thoroughly looking forward to, to next season. Big game still to go. Hopefully, we can take care of that. But next year, obviously, is a, there's no doubt we need, we need to strengthen, as everybody else will. Celtic will. Aberdeen, like Ruffy says. Hearts, everybody will be looking to strengthen, but we, are, we can we focus on us and we know if we get the right players in, we've, uh, we've got a good opportunity to go and, go and really challenge next year. Yeah, it's almost as if Rangers have thrown down the gauntlet to the other sides again. Hearts, you know, come out of the Championship, had a fantastic season, Ruffy, but I, I wonder about whether Derek McInnes will get that sort of backing. I mean, he must have got the bug mm -hmm. for coming so close, never a better chance than this season. Yeah, they'll be hoping the owners have got the bug as well. You know, that's what you want. You want uh, when when they see what you're doing on the part and they see that the run that they gave the supporters, and they want to make it better next year. I mean, they were so so close, you know, and that's what he'll be saying to himself as a manager, and he'll be like hoping that the players are saying the same as well. But you need everybody to buy into it. Yep, there's a small matter of uh, the playoffs coming up as well. We'll be discussing that too. Uh, at the weekend, it was uh, the Premiership uh, scores that we'll have a look at now uh, that are very interesting indeed. Uh, of course, Dundee United relegated and Kilmarnock now know uh, that they are in the playoff position. Um, Dundee United getting the win on Friday. Uh, of course, Hamilton making sure they were safe, Ruffy, in the division with that good win up at Dundee. But... Uh, I think you more than anybody will be aware of what was felt uh, down at Rugby Park. You were down there among the players mm -hmm. at their end of season bash. Yeah, I think obviously you're down there. Uh, it's done and dusted. You know where you are. You can focus on what's coming up, and that's what they were doing. You know, they would just obviously have to wait and see who they're going to get. But they, they, they believe that they've still got the players there. Obviously, Kenny was talking about Boydie and McGuinness. These are guys that can still win games for you, so that they have to keep believing that uh, they'll be in there at the end. You know, strangely enough, uh, you know, when he went back to Kilmarnock, he, um, you know, scored goals, uh, you know, on a regular basis. I think that's what got him a, a, another move. But this time around, it's been it's been more difficult for him, and it's been more difficult for that side at times with uh, injuries and the ultimate change of manager, Kenny. I think they have been unfortunate with injuries. I mean, they've had some really long term ones. Uh, the start of the season to, to, to crucial players, defenders, a lot of defenders got injured start. For Boydie's situation, I mean, he's not really had a, a, a run in that team. He maybe started at the start of the season, things maybe never quite went, but again, that was maybe more a team thing. But look at the end of the season, like I said, touched on before, that is, you play Boydie, he will get you goals. And there's, he's got that belief in himself, with his own ability as well. And if there's any man who'll, who's got, a, got it in him to score the goals to win the playoff and keep them up, then... I'm sure he's the man. Yeah, do you think he could be the crucial one? Because we always look to the playoffs and a significant player who can handle the pressures of it. Listen, boy, did it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I know him well. He doesn't really feel pressure. He, he kind of goes into every game the same way. 
if you put that ball in the box and give him a chance, he'll score a goal. And I think that's the way he'll approach it again. It'll be a, it'll be a good contest, but whether they get Hibs or Falkirk, uh, it'll be quite an evenly matched affair. Like you say, it might be who can who can handle the pressure on the day, who can have that match winner. Yeah, you, you're better placed than most to assess this next stage of the playoffs. Falkirk and Hibs, obviously the first one tomorrow night at Easter Road. Yeah, I was here last year when they were playing with Lewis and you told me it was a good omen to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we put the kiss of death on you, yeah. I must apologise. No, listen, I think over the course of the season, uh, both teams have, have had decent years. Hibs obviously had a big blip in the league over the last kind of two or three months. Uh, getting to both cup finals was a huge achievement, but Falkirk finishing second was a a fantastic achievement for them. Tuesday's done a great job. They've got some really good players. It'll be a tight game, as all these games are, in, in the playoffs. Anything can happen, but Hibs being at home in the first leg will definitely look to put an advantage on the board. Yeah, and with that advantage <coughs> that Kenny's talking about, Ruffy, does it need to be just a slender one or does it need to be two or three in your mind? No, I think you always want to take some advantage. You know, if you go there, you know, they obviously have to get a goal. You know, sometimes if they're... Uh, forcing the game, the spaces could be made and certainly with Stokes and Cummins up there they would expect to get chances but uh, no, I think if you, you need to go some, you know, with something under your belt you know, after the first game Yeah, uh, And of course the, you talked about the, the goal scorers that maybe Kilmarnock will be relying on, the likes of a Josh McGuinness or a Chris Boyd of the two sides, when you look at them you know, Hibs middle to front uh, are where we've been most impressed with them this season, Kenny. Yeah, they are strong, definitely. I mean, I think what's, what's Jason got is a 24, 25 goals again this year. Anthony Stokes, there's no doubt in the quality he's got, and I think he'll definitely start to be, and reports are, he's starting to look a little bit fitter on things with the games he's been getting, and there's, like I say, there's no doubt in the quality he's got, but they're, they're strong in the, like you say, from midfield to front, they've got some good players, some good creative players, and they've definitely got guys that can score goals, but you look at Falkers' team, John Baird's had a fantastic season as well, he's again touching 20 goals probably again this season, so they've got players about a creative edge, I mean, He'd probably just give Hibs the edge in, in, in that respect. But again, it doesn't really go for much unless you turn up and perform on the day. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, a lot of people have talked about the, the value to the league. There's obvious value Rangers being back in it. But is there a greater value Hibs coming back up? Or you don't place any value on it? Just the, the best team? Listen, you, you want the best teams <clears throat> in there. I've said this all along. I mean, no, I mean, whoever wins, wins and comes through, comes through. If Kelly stay up, then they'll, again, they'll be a welcome addition to the league as well. But for me, I'd like to see Hibs, I'd like to see Hibs go up. I felt the way they've went about their job the last few week, last few years since Alan Stubbs came in has been, has been good. I say they've got some good players, they've got a nice stadium. Uh, they are, no doubtedly, one of the bigger clubs in the country. So if you want the, the, the game to be better, the Scottish football improved, then I think we need the, the biggest biggest clubs and the best best teams in the league. Yeah, man, no point in asking you. He agrees with you wholeheartedly <laughs> on that, Kenny. Uh, I'm not even going to bother asking him about that. What I am going to ask you about is Ray McKinnon. It looks as if it's a, you know, a, a done deal. It's just mm -hmm. uh, arguing over uh, the odd bit of the, the weekly wage, I would imagine, and the vision for Dundee United. Yeah, but he seems to fit the bill. You know, we keep talking about the Celtic new manager and they keep saying he has to be Celtic-minded. Certainly, uh, Ray McKinnon's Dundee United-minded uh, and that always gives you a head start, you know, when you go in there and uh, he's an up-and-coming manager and I'm sure he'll have uh, a view of where he's going to take them and uh, he needs to act very quickly because we don't want them languishing down there too often either. Yeah, have you been impressed by what he's done at Wraith Rovers, Kenny? Oh, well, they went on an incredible run there towards the end of the season. Uh, obviously, just fell down there and the great result in the first in the first leg. They say we're talking about slender leads and I mean, obviously, if they managed to get another another goal, it would have been a little bit more interesting. But he's done a great job there. They have been tough to play against this year. Uh, he's found, particularly against us, he's found a way that did make us hard, hard, that made them hard to beat, very hard to break down. And again, I think he's instilled a belief and he's got a, a team spirit amongst the lads that they're, they're enjoying what they do. Uh, they want to work hard for the manager and I think that shows in the performances they're put on. Yep. Um, as far as the other playoffs are concerned, here's the, re the results from uh, the weekend. And as you can see, Hibbs edging past Wraith Rovers. Air United finally put paid to Peter Head. And uh, what a game between Livingston and Srinrar. Was Srinrar just edging it in the end? Uh, Cowdenbeath uh, managed to get the win over Queen's Park, but Queen's Park prevailed uh, and they will take on Barry Ferguson's Clyde, although there has been a fair bit of consternation about where that game was going to be played. And next Saturday we'll know whether it's Edinburgh City 
or East Stirlingshire. So there's the playoff results. Uh, we are going to talk about the other playoff matches that are taking place this week. But more importantly, in the second part of the programme, we're going to talk to Kenny about the Scottish Cup final. It's going to be Rangers against Hibernian. Will it be the perfect three for Kenny this season? We'll get his thoughts on a treble for Rangers after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV. I'm delighted that uh, alongside Alan Ruff, as ever, yeah. we have our boot room guest is Rangers striker Kenny Miller. Um, Kenny, we're looking forward to the cup final and it would be, uh, ultimately for yourself, the perfect finish, a treble. Yeah, it'd be a great end to uh, already been a fantastic season. Uh, the game we've said a lot, not just what we've achieved, the way we've achieved it in such a short space of time with the manager and Davey coming in. Uh, yeah, great end to the season. A fantastic occasion. Two, two good teams looking to, looking to win the Scottish Cup. Hopefully it's a fantastic game and, and we can just edge it. Yeah, and over the course of the season, the battles with Hibs have been special. It's been eagerly anticipated. You know, in the Championship, suddenly you two guys uh, have brought the focus onto it. Yeah, they've been, like I said, I mean, they are a good team. They're a good team. We've had some good battles against them already this season. I think we're just edging it over there. I think we've had five games. We're just edging it 3-2. But like you say, within the games, there have been some tight ones, there have been some not-so-tight ones. But uh, again, we'll focus on what we're doing. We know if we go about our business the right way, we play how we're supposed to play, we know we'll get chances and we know we'll cause them problems. You've had the taste of that hard <clears throat> pitch. Does it suit the way Mark Warburton likes to play on the evidence of the game against Celtic? It's an emphatic yes. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I think it's uh, uh, it helped, obviously, the pitch was relayed and was very, very good, by the way. Uh, for the Celtic game and it really helped us play the way we want to play which is quick passing one, two, three touch max and, and get the team chasing the ball and it, it, worked, it worked a treat that day. I was going to say the, the support has always said to be a big advantage certainly at that last game your support were unbelievable I mean we were, we were at the game I mean right for the like an hour before the game they were so up for it it wasn't real. Yeah no listen I've been I remember the first game of the season I brought this year uh, against St Mirren and it was I wasn't playing, I was suspended, so I was uh, in the stands and it was the place was rocking and it has been all through the season. But like you say, that day, I think that there was a real real eagerness going into that game. They were really looking forward, as we were. Like, we were confident about going into the game, really looking forward to a huge occasion with two, two massive clubs going at it. And I think the fans really, they got right behind us, but I really felt that they, they thought that we could go and do it as well. And the kind of bounced off the belief that all the noises was coming out of our camp that we were confident we knew what we had to go and do and I think they really believed us and got right behind us. Yeah, you mentioned the word belief. Uh, I would attribute quite a bit of that to the experience of David Weir and knows what the club's about uh, and obviously the skills of Mark Warburton because last week at the PFA Awards, you know, Barry Mackay comes up, Lee Wallace, they all mention that collective and even the manager when he picks up the Manager of the Year Award. Yeah, David's been huge. I mean, again, the manager... Any time he speaks, he always gives a, a huge mention to Davy and, and the rest of his staff for that matter. But obviously he's worked with, he's worked with Davy for a few years now. He knows the qualities that he brings. Uh, for me, I mean, he's not changed. He's, he's, he's the calm, calm and influence on the dressing room now as he was as a player. But uh, he knows his stuff and he's a, as a team, the two of them are formidable as a team. Yeah, what about as an individual? Because obviously I said to Ruffy, he played up until he was 39. Um, you're defying medical science, Kenny. <laughs> you just keep going. Yeah. No, that's, 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 uh, again, it helps the way we play. It helps with uh, we train hard. We work hard every day. It's, I mean, the manager wouldn't have it anyway. So come us, come us hard. They were prepared and ready for the games. But uh, it's really helped me, the other lads in the team, that the way we play it, it definitely allows me to to play the way I want to play. It gives us a certain freedom. To, to move along that front line and, and it just seems to suit and I know it's, it's cliche but it's always easy to play when you're on the ball and you're not, you're not chasing about for 60, 70 minutes. Yeah, you've played with a few uh, striking partnerships in your time. Um, how do you rate Waghorn? What's he got that's special? Because, you know, I think Ruffy, you thought he was going to get 40 goals for the season. Um, I he, agreed I think he, last week on that, actually. I, I, I think he might have, actually, yeah. if he hadn't picked up the injury. Uh, listen, I don't I don't think... I mean, I, maybe someone will never know. But I don't think there's... In my opinion, he definitely would have hit that landmark had he, had he not got injured. I mean, he was scoring at an incredible rate. Like, all kinds of goals, because he's not... 
he's not just a, I wouldn't even say why he's an out and out goal scorer, mm. because he's got so much more to his game. I mean, he's, he's been playing right a lot of the season when we playing through the middle, but like I say, there is a freedom to move and interchange of position, but he can dribble, he can, he's got a great left foot, he's a powerful, powerful player, he's quick. He's got everything you need to go and to go and be a good striker. But like I say, he's got a lot more to his game than just his goals. But there's no doubt, in my opinion, he would have got to that, that 40 goal landmark. Yeah, uh, uh, you. we always talk about levels on this programme. Uh, you played with some wonderful players, you know, Giovanni Van Brunk, Bronckhorst, you, Claudio Canigia. Um, you, you've played at a time when it was Chris Boyd as your partner as well. Um, but you, you have to have options. And, yeah. and I think this team has a number of options for goal scoring. I mean, two fullbacks that score it's, goals it's as well incredible. is outrageous. It is incredible. But again, we've got, like you talk about partnerships, that the way we play, obviously, it's not a, it's not a two up front. It's, it's a three up front. And Young Barry's had a fantastic season as well. And I think that whoever's playing, it could be Michael King, he's played a late. Harry Forrester came in for that spell before his injury and, and done very well in their position as well. So we have got a lot of options. And like you say, when you've got Goldman, Jason Holt, I think he's got 10 or 11 goals as well. Andy Halliday's no far off double figures as well. We must have, I think, five, five guys maybe in double figures this year, which is incredible. Yeah, is there a standout for you? Is there somebody you, you, you've looked at and thought, really impressed with them, maybe didn't have an insight as, you know, as much as you do now when you're playing alongside them? Well, to be honest, in any of the signings that we made, there was, you probably never, I never knew too much about them. Uh, but every single one of them have come in and, and showed they're more than capable of playing for the football club. Jason Holt, Andy Halliday, Tav, Rob Kiernan, Wes, Waggy, they've all come in and made huge, huge impacts on the scene. There's, there's six guys that have pretty much played every minute of every game. You throw Waldo onto that, who's been a model of consistency this year and a fantastic captain for the club as well. It's, uh, we've had a real good, solid team for the majority of the scene. There's maybe been one or two kind of guys that have been coming in and out, but there's been a Eight players really have been have been a constant all year. Yeah, yeah I think I think the good thing that Kenny's just saying there that the the important thing for all these new signings is and we keep talking about players going to Rangers and Celtic when they don't know the the history of the club, yeah. how they adapt. All the guys that you've mentioned and then it hasn't it phased them one bit. See, to be honest, I, I can't speak hard enough for the boys because they've really taken it on board. Like the manager's message has been clear for them about how big the club is, the, the history of the club, the demands and expectations you've touched on about as well that are only going to get greater, but they've really embraced it and they've, they've taken it right on. And It doesn't take me, people say, do you have to pass on? Like, you don't have to because the, the guys get it. They know what it's about, they know what it takes, they know the demands and expectations that we need to go and win every game and if we don't, it's a disaster. They've really embraced that and they're, and they're taking it on board. And, that's why to, to pinpoint one or two is no fair because every single one of them that's came in has been great. Yeah, we talked about the qualities of the manager. We also have to look at the expectations of next season. He's already talked about the fact that he wants to get two or three signings in uh, quickly so yeah. that you guys can head to summer camp in five or six weeks' time with a settled squad. How important will that be? Yeah, it'll be huge because we know you've only got to look at the, the Celtic game where we had four outfield players on the bench that we do need to strengthen that. There's two, three lone players within that as well, so there's no doubt we need to, we need to get some more numbers in to, to bolster up the squad. And again, we've got a fantastic manager and assistant manager, and Frank McParland, the head of recruitment. All these lads are working tirelessly and probably have been for months. So obviously, we don't see that. We just see them turning up and putting sessions on for us and, and, and working away. But behind the scenes, there's so much work going on and there's no doubt they've, they've got full, full belief in the, in the squad that they'll go and get the right players because we touched on it before as well that it needs to be the right player you don't want to disrupt the harmony and the, and the togetherness and that, and that unity that we've <coughs> talked about in the last kind of month or so as well that we want to make sure that that's even better next year Yeah, are you confident that you can challenge for the title Kenny because over and above Celtic um, there are other clubs yep. now Hearts, Aberdeen who want to make a real push on this one I, I believe we can and I think with a few additions that will make us stronger I think we'll have got a a nucleus of a really good squad at the moment. And again, that shows the, the team that started against Celtic. And I know it's only a one-off game, but I think Don Ball goes back. The rest of the lads are, are going to be there. So it's not going to take, it's not as if there's going to be wholesale change like there was last year. We just need to get the right additions in the right place, the right character, and there's, I have no, no doubt that we're, we could be in a good position to go and challenge this year. Yeah, well, it's setting it up nicely, Ruffy. Um, you might as well tell Kenny what your prediction is for the cup final, because he'll not be too surprised. Uh, you, you know, what, how do you think it's going to go? Uh, I think it'll be a tight game, uh, obviously. 
uh, you didn't come, uh, Kenny. <laughs> you didn't come. There you go. Mine. I have to push. Uh, <laughs> I, I think Rangers have had all the success this year. Give some deals a chance. <laughs> There you are. Uh, you're not too surprised by that, Kenny, are you? Uh, and nothing would please you more uh, than to be lifting the Scottish Cup and getting a, another medal. Uh, listen, that's all we've got time for. An absolute delight to have uh, Kenny Miller here. We will have him back again because uh, he'll probably be on the verge of a four-year deal shortly, <laughs> knowing him. Uh, I'm sure he'll be able to play past the age of 39 that you played uh, on to Ruffy. But uh, great to have Kenny Miller here in the studio. Join us tomorrow on the programme, if my memory serves me correct, Mother Will Stephen McManus is going to join us on the programme and uh, talk about this season's uh, Premiership and give us his thoughts on some of the playoffs as well. Thanks to Kenny Miller. Good luck for the Cup Final. From Ruffy and myself, good night.